Hi everyone, this is a Vizem video today and I would like to show you how to use Carpark Creator. In addition, um, I will use a gated entrance to the car park, so vehicles, each of them will wait 5 seconds before they get into the car park. I will place the car park away from a main line from the street to a completely different link and I will use partial routing, static routing and parking routing to basically move vehicles around the network so that will teach you what is the hierarchy um, between different uh, routing decisions and how to use them, how to embed them uh, in each other. So let's start by creating a link. This link is the main street and I will create a place for the car park. I just use a connector to connect the two together and an exit as well so vehicles after parking will go back to the main line then let's use the creator on the left you can find the create car park icon just click on it it brings up this tool it's very easy to use because you just need to use your left control drag it and just release it and then you can do a lot of uh, settings here so the Main um, lane um, settings are here. You can just um, make some settings here. It's, um, I'm not going to go through uh, these because it's, it's quite self-explanatory. You can hold your mouse over things and then it will show you what it is. It's very basic settings. Here about the car parking spaces, you can create one on the left or on the right. When you use this, you can also use these ticks, so you don't need to set up everything twice, you can just use that, and then both will adopt the settings from the other. Um, you can set different angles, so not perpendicular, but you can have them in like 30 degrees or 60 degrees, so like, in a, um, like on the side street sometimes. You can also set up different display types, link behaviors, width, lengths. Um, it counts the spaces here, count. You can um, use parking rate reverse, so how many vehicles will reverse or go in front or front in, rear out and so on, or the other way around. Um, there are all kinds of settings here, like how quick, how fast they drive. <laughs> what is the time it takes to change direction? Um, when they go in or out, when they reverse and then go forward or the other way around. Also the speed for each attraction, um, some basic car park settings and evaluation groups and, and so on. Um, you can also in the third section here set up um, the parking routing settings. I'm going to leave this as it is and later I will change it. Um, you cannot edit these once you clicked OK, but you can edit these later. And you can also, most of these are editable as well because that's on the main link. <laughs> so I just go with the default, accept. And then as you can see, it creates automatically all the links, all the connectors, all the reduction, speed reduction. It automatically creates all um, priority rules, but you cannot edit it and you cannot see them either. Um, it will become visible when you run the model, I think, if I remember correctly. And it also creates a parking routing decision. This is something you can move back and forth to fit your model. I would recommend it to not to put it very close to the end, the start of the link, but somewhere like in the middle. Or if you have a very long link, just make sure that um, when the vehicle passes this, then the space will be assigned. So if it's too far away and uh, we, a lot of vehicle keep passing, you might have issues where with the assignment that the car park might become empty but the vehicle already passed it so it will not find that space empty it will still see it as occupied you also want to place it further here otherwise you get a warning or if your vehicles drive too fast they can just skip or just drive through within the same time step when as they enter the link and this is also quite um, not recommended to happen <laughs> okay 
Now I double click on the parking routine decision and here you can change the parking duration to like 20 seconds. <laughs> These are time distributions here. So if you go to base data, uh, distributions and time, then here you can add or modify the time distributions you want to use. Um, so let's do now the, the gate. I will model the gate with stop sign. I place it here. There are two tabs, an arrow at RTOR, right turn um, on red. That's an American thing mainly, or I, or I don't know what other countries have that one as well. <laughs> and the time distribution tab is what you want to use. So right click there, click add, and the vehicle class card comes up with the basic or the default time distribution. This is the same as I showed before for the parking duration. So in the time distribution, you can just change these. So more will be available, but that is already a five second. So I will just use that. If you have multiple, multiple vehicle types, you can keep adding more and select a different time for each. Now we need to deal with the routes. But before we do that, let, uh, let me just add the vehicle input. I set it to like 200 vehicles and I want cars only. Then let's add static route. Make sure that you click on that this arrow and you select static. I add it here a bit far away from the entrance point and click the end here. So now this will take vehicles guide through the network. Within this, there is already a parking routing, but I need something that directs vehicle through. <laughs> you might be able to get um, this issue done by duplicating the static route and create one there. <laughs> but I want to show you how to use partial because like static is, is more preferred to be used when there is a different exit for it. So you might have a different exit link here, then you would use a different static routing for that. So in this case, a partial route, you can select it by using that um, arrow and select partial route. A partial route basically creates a local distribution of the traffic and sits fully within a static route. So if you have a static route, a partial is within that. So we have our static route here. So I will place the partial there and end it here. So it is fully within the static. It brings up this partial vehicle routing decision list where the red is here. That's the decision point. And this is the route number. So vehicle routing decision number. And this is the actual partial route number. Now I need to click, create a duplicate. So the same decision number, but a different route. There are two overlapping. I select the second. I hold on control and I right click in the middle to create an intermediate point. That intermediate point you can drag here. Just you need to make sure that you select. So if you have links selected, you can't create an intermediate point. Yeah. So just make sure that you select the vehicle route. This way, you have a static vehicle route. When a vehicle passes that, that will be the route. Then the vehicle passes this. There are two choices here with a relative flow 1 1. So it will split vehicles 50 50. So it will assign either this or either this. And then this partial route will take over. <laughs> then for vehicles that keep going on the top, when they reach this point, they will, like that point, vehicles will be um, back under static route. So from here, it will be the static route, not the partial anymore. Vehicles, <laughs> vehicles on this route, we keep coming down. And once they pass this point, the parking route decision point, 
the parking routing will take over. That will guide vehicles into a car park. And once the parking movement is done, it will assign them back the partial routing where they arrived from. That the partial routing will guide them back to the main line. And at this point, they will give it back to the static routing and the vehicle will be driving under static routing. And this point, it will not be on anything after this and it will enter the exit network. <laughs> Okay, when you go to the parking routing decision, you can also set up what vehicle types or classes you want um, this car park to be available for or to. So let's just start the model and let me explain how vehicles will be selected. So let me just wait until a vehicle comes in. So this is a car, this is a Volkswagen Golf. So you can add these vehicle routing, parking, partial routing decision numbers type and the static number and also the model 2D, 3D here by clicking on this wrench and just selecting it from this list. Yeah? As you can see, at this vehicle at the moment doesn't have any routing. So it just goes. Once it gets here, you can see it passed the static, so now it's on the static route. The routing decision number is 1, and this is the static route 101. So if I go and find a static route, <laughs> this is 101, this. 1, the decision, decision number 1, and within that the route is 1. So that's why it says 1-1. One -one. So let's just follow that vehicle until it passes the partial route. As you can see now, the decision type is partial route and the route number is 1, 2. So the partial route 1, 2 is that. So the vehicle will drive down towards the car park. I wait until the vehicle gets to the gate. <laughs> and the vehicle will wait here 5 seconds in, at the gate, then it goes on. If you want to um, record this video in 3D and you want to place a gate that even moves, you can just let me know in the comment section and I will make a video about that, how to set it up. So now let's go back. As you can see, the vehicle is still on a partial route and it is about to pass the parking route. So now it is on the parking lot and it will park. And the vehicle routing park is 115, so it will park there. Now that vehicle will spend some time there, let's just wait while that happens. You can also select that vehicle and you can add Well, time dwell time so you can see that 15 seconds is left from the parking maneuver now it leaves still on the car park routing but it will go back to the partial route now it's on the parking partial route and once it passes that point it will go back to static and then it will be nothing after the static is done. So now let me show you one something else what can cause a problem. So I have spaces set up to 5 meter length 5001. I have in my vehicle types an Audi that is 4999 so that is almost as long as the parking space but it's important to know that the parking space needs to be a little bit longer I think around 30-40 cm longer than the vehicle otherwise the vehicle will not park 
And in that case, let's see what happens. So let's just look for an Audi that goes down. We can just list vehicles in the network and we can place here the 3D model. So we can just um, wait until uh, an Audi appears. It should happen. Any second you can see vehicles give way to each other and the parking. Maybe that super bay combi is also longer. Let's just see. So if I click on it, you can see it's a parking lot. So that is not too long. And it reverses in. <laughs> So an Audi should come very soon. And Fiat 500, Mercedes T1. Just let's give it a few seconds. So you need to be careful when you create a car parking, when you use the creator tool that you give enough distance or enough length for the spaces because that is something you can't really change later. Or if you change this like a pain, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that um, because it just depends a lot of stuff automatically created. And if you change one, um, it might not work as reliably. So I think it comes in 400 seconds, so it should appear any minute. Volkswagen Golfs, Audi, okay, so this is our car, this is our car, you can see it's under static route, now it's under partial route, it is coming down, and let's see what happens when it passes the routing decision, it's still under partial route, so it will ignore the parking routing decision because it cannot accommodate that car in any of the spaces. So that's why it just basically drives through the car park with the parking routing decision. And if I zoom out, then you will see that, that we go back to static and then it will leave the network without parking. So this is the way it works. I hope it helps a lot. If you have any questions or any ideas for any future videos, just please let me know. I'm really grateful. I would like to thank all of the members and Patreon supporters to support me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. If you want to um, support me, please consider liking and subscribing, commenting. All of these help the YouTube algorithm and my channel. And also you can go to Patreon uh, or on YouTube. You can sign up as a member. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.